I'm starting with some cardboard to make a prototype. And here's kind of what I'm picturing for my design. We've got a living hinge that's gonna give the outer flap of the handbag its bend. And then there's this resin inlay section that I'm designing to look like a fruit slice. And finally, the pieces to create a box that will serve as the main body of this. All right, let's head back over to that cardboard and see how this all comes together. I like this method of prototyping because it allows me to sketch changes directly on my item. Then I can measure my sketches to translate back into the digital file. I'm gonna sketch some spots for a magnetic closure on the end of the flap here. I'm sketching in where I want accent leather. And then finally, I decided that I wanted to get rid of a few rows of living hinges. So version one, certainly not perfect, but all in all, pretty good for a version one. All right, back to the computer for version number two. I'm feeling really happy with how this version came out and I'm ready to cut it in the final material, which is gonna be eighth inch thick mulberry. We salvage lumber that comes down in storms and tree work in the Massachusetts area. So not too long ago, the mulberry looked a whole lot like this. We kiln dry it and plane it down to be used as raw material in our own work and also to provide other makers with a more sustainable option for raw material that looks great and saves these trees from the chipper. One of these materials being laser ready sheets. We carry a wide variety of these in maple, oak, walnut, cherry, and so on in eighth inch and quarter inch thicknesses. These are available on makersworkshop.com. Now let's get back to the project. Mulberry is really warm looking, so I think it'll be nice with the citrus. Um, yeah, wish me luck. All right, so starting out with a sand and then I'm wiping this down with water to pop the grain and then sand this again to a 220 grit because it's going to be quite difficult to sand these pieces after they're laser cut. So I'm getting that sanded finish perfect at this phase of the process. As masking material, I'm adding painter's tape to both sides of the mulberry sheets. And I ended up prepping a few sheets of mulberry so I had enough to do my entire pattern. I started off by cutting the smaller side pieces of the handbag because I figured these were lower stakes for honing in my settings and making sure I was getting a nice clean cut, just like this. And then I went in with the big cut, which is gonna be the main flap piece of the design. So this has the living hinge and the fruit slice cut out. And here it is. I was a little bit nervous to pop it out and feel how the hinge would bend, but I thought it felt really nice. All right, I'm peeling the fruit part of this, but it occurred to me that I should probably leave painter's tape on the hinge just to reinforce it a bit throughout the next process. So I did that and then I added more painter's tape to just the backside of the infill section to create what is gonna be my resin mold. And the last step of prepping this resin mold kind of thing is getting a clear coat of epoxy down on the interior edges of my cups. All right, so that first layer of resin is hardened 
And what that's gonna do is help adhere the painter's tape bottom to the wood and also seal the grain of the mulberry. Now it's time to fill this with the colors I picked. Off camera, I did a couple of test pours on separate pieces of mulberry to get a feel for the colors that I wanted this to be. I'm going for an orange wedge, so I'm starting with an orange peel that I colored using an orange mica powder, and then I also added a stripe of white to the peel using a white mica powder. And then for the triangle sections, I wanted to fuse together the two test pours that I'd done and fill these with both orange and yellow. And then I was gonna like blend it and it was supposed to be this real, I really thought I was doing something, you see, but I ended up hating it. So um, frantically off camera, um, I just emptied it all out and report it with just the golden yellow color because I thought that would look better. Um, yeah. It might be a lemon now, but I think it looks good, so the trade-off is worth it. And this remains my favorite go-to method for shallow resin pours like this because once the resin hardens, the unmolding is so simple because the painter's tape peels off just like it would peel off of any other solid surface. time to sand and I don't want the process of sanding this to snap the hinge so I'm just gonna leave all the tape on here in general from here on out I think the order that I do things and finish this and assemble this is gonna be really important so I really want to think it through oh and I like resin sanded to a 220 grit it gives it kind of a nice matte sea glassy look that's what i prefer i'm starting with an 80 grit i'm going to a 150 grit and then finishing off with a 120 grit okay now let's go all right resin pour is looking really good and it's important to take a moment to get all the resin dust off of this before finish goes on also, it is now time to remove the painter's tape from the living hinge. This took a surprising amount of time because of all the little cuts, but I just went slow with it and it was pretty exciting to see this starting to all take shape. And then it was time to get finish on. I'm going with Osmo, which is a floor finish. I use this all the time. It's my favorite because it's really durable being a floor finish, but it also gives the wood a really velvety finished look. It's not too harsh like a glossy poly or something would be. So I'm just getting this all over both sides of all of the pieces. And you'll notice that I covered the box joints that are gonna be on the interior of the bag with painter's tape for this step because I need those box joints to still have raw wood to be able to take the glue well enough that this will have a secure hold when I assemble it. So hopefully this trick works. Um, and then the last piece to go is the large flap piece. To avoid the Osmo pooling up and getting gunky looking in the living hinge cuts, I'm doing the living hinge section in a series of very, very thin coats of this, and it seemed to work out okay. And then I just went in and got finished on the back and then let these all sit overnight to harden before moving on to the next steps. And check it out. The painter's tape trick worked over the box joints because those are still looking nice and finish free. Let's add some accent leather. Just like with the wood, this is getting painter's tape as a masking material on both sides of it. 
before heading into the laser cutter. The weather cuts pretty amazingly in the laser cutter. It smells pretty terrible, but is well worth it in my opinion for those perfectly positioned stitching holes and the speed of it. And after that first piece of leather, I'm gonna use this darker brown material for the lining cut and the handles. I think this will all tie together nicely. kind of gunked up this leather. I'm not, I've never had this experience before, um, but I don't know, it wasn't that bad. And this is just the lining, so I went with it. And that's all the accent leather. So now it's time to sew each piece into its place. And assembling these, is delightful because the stitching holes are already perfectly positioned for me. So as long as I do my running stitch and don't mess with that part up, it's going to end up looking like really perfect stitching and the leather is going to be securely held in place. This lining method is somewhat experimental. I designed it so that it would be sewn in in the same section of stitching as the strip of leather that's going on the outside of the bag that's gonna hold the loop for the handles. I think this will be a durable approach. Uh, so I stacked my pieces together like I'm showing here and then secured it all in place with another running stitch. And I'm using waxed thread for all of the sewing on this bag. It's nice and durable and made to be used with leather. And I'm repeating the same step on the opposite side of the lining leather. So it's gonna look kind of weird when this is done, but trust me, this is heading somewhere. As I've mentioned, I'm making a magnetic closure for this bag, but before I start gluing in magnets, I'm gonna protect the leather that I just sewed in using more painter's tape. So much painter's tape in this, but it really, really does the trick. I'm using five minute epoxy as my glue, and I'm just going in with a generous dollop in each of the seats that I laser engraved for each earth magnet. I also put painter's tape on the back side of each magnet to, to make sure that these will come out of this looking nice and shiny as well. Each magnet has an opposite magnet that's getting glued into place on the front flap of the bag like this. And I went really slow with this just to make sure that I was gluing everything in in the right orientation so that they will snap together and not repel each other. So back over to this lining, I'm going to add some glue to this just so it will lay a bit flatter. To get this to adhere, I'm just scuffing up the surface of that finish and then applying a liberal coat of type three wood glue and some pressure, just like that. Okay, it's glue up time. I have one shot to get this right. Ah, it's a little intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. 
regularly with a glue up. If you get any glue drips or things like that, you can just sand them off and it's not that big of a deal. Because this is all finished already, I can't do that. I have to just do it once and do it right. And whatever it is, it is. Applying the glue to each tab with my fingers felt like the most precise way to go, so that's what I did. And then I steadied each panel using some more painter's tape. Of course. And I popped some clamps on there once it was secure and all together and able to take that kind of pressure and then let it sit overnight. Okay. Hopefully it's good. It's done. This is a purse chain that I just had kicking around, but you can find these on Amazon or lots of different places. And as always, the files are available for download on makersworkshop.com if you wanna give this design a try for yourself.